Good morning and welcome. Happy Hump Day, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Legal, lawful, constitutional tender wealth insurance. It is what we do, the physical delivery of gold and silver. We also dabble every now and again in platinum and palladium and even a little rhodium from time to time, what I call the other metals, but gold and silver, it is what we do. And you think about, really, just even in the last 48 hours, some of the craziness that, that's come out in the world. It, it, more than ever, you need to have some wealth insurance. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592, is our toll-free number, the website, at allamericangold.com. Make it part of your daily routine. We did get some good news here in Arizona. Uh, the Diamondbacks finally won a game. I mean, they were on a six-game losing streak. And then the Suns got the number one pick in the NBA draft. Unfortunately, no one actually watches the NBA anymore. Well, I shouldn't say no one. I don't. Uh, but nonetheless, good news, I get, if you will. My mother who is coming up. My son graduates from high school tomorrow, our oldest does. Um, She was on the airplane yesterday in Syracuse. They put them on the plane. They got on to the runway, and then, uh, you know, that huge storm was coming, uh, and they, I guess they decided better, uh, turned around, told everybody to get off the plane and come back tomorrow. Uh, So hopefully she, she... had, she's left Syracuse. Let's put it that way. She's left Syracuse. Hopefully she'll be able to make it in today uh, in time for the graduation ceremony tomorrow. Uh, tonight they've got a, a mass. All the seniors and my wife and I were heading to, uh, uh, you know, just to come together and, and look for guidance from above as they get ready to embark on uh, the next stage of their life, and so uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm definitely going to be out of here early. But Arlene will, uh, and really, might as well throw Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I, I won't be here uh, much past probably noon. Uh, but Arlene will be here. She can take care of you. Uh, again, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The tenure note, the bond market. You got to pay attention. Uh, this is kind of where. Not kind of. This has really been leading uh, to a lot of heartache for a lot of countries out there. Uh, yesterday, we, we talked about uh, Argentina and and their their markets blowing up. They were able to sell some debt yesterday. They ended up selling it at a twenty percent interest rate, and I only bring that up because this is what happened. As things uh, start to disintegrate, and, and and I don't care, you know what? And I know that they're trying to tell you this is all planned. We've got it organized. It's okay. It's not okay. Italian bonds skyrocketing uh, this morning again, as well as news over there that they're getting ready to just say, you know what? We we don't know what else to do, so let's just blow up the debt. And if we've got to defy the EU, so be it. And this is, we're going to hear more and more and more of these things happening. Yesterday we talked about subprime auto loans. Today I find out, by the way, the ones that haven't quite got there yet, the 60-day defaults, you know, people that haven't made payments in 60 days, yeah, that's at a 22-year high. And, I mean, it's like a sliver. It's, it, it's going to be an all-time high here in the next couple of months. Uh, And this is an alleged good time, right? And they talked about how great earnings were. I got news for you. And I I don't want to be negative about it. We know the tax cuts helped a lot, but the problem was a lot of the earnings, and I mean a lot, were what we call the non-GAAP accounting earnings that were supposed to have gone away. You know what was so funny is when they found economic nirvana when alan greenspan was talking about how we were going to have the debt paid off by 2010 and and we're going to save all of that interest and that was going to allow us to to pay for social security and medicare 
they instituted these rules that, hey, you know what, because all of this great stuff, uh, and of course, obviously, after the tech bubble crashed, hey, we got to be a little more honest with our earnings. And they came up with the generally accepted accounting uh, principles. And that was supposed to be the new way that companies were supposed to report. Unfortunately, uh, people just, you know what, as soon as they didn't like what it looked like, they stopped doing it. And now we have really, truly, we really don't know how good they are. And that's the part that bothers me, right? How good are they really? What are the real earnings? Not what a earnings minus the, what I'll call the accounting tricks. Uh, and, and, of course, when you get to that number, everybody would look at it and say, well, you know, 24000 probably should be fourteen, And I think that's what's going to end up happening. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I, uh, we're going to talk about, matter of fact, Alan Greenspan actually talked about his prediction back at the end of the 90s, right into the tech bubble crash, about the pipe dream of paying off the national debt and what the ramifications are going to be. And 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 I think it's very, very telling because here's somebody who, before he became a member of the Federal Reserve, was talking about we need to go back to a gold standard, then said, nope, let's go fiat, I can be the maestro, and now... In retrospect, says Ben, we made a big mistake. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, the U.S. ten-year note has hit a high of three point oh nine. Uh, it's three point oh eight and change right now. And I just laugh because historically that would be a great number, and now it's turning into utter devastation. And and it's just making the rounds. And remember, I told you, it's going to gobble up whole entire countries as it grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And and now uh, Argentina sold, uh, I think it was $5 billion at a 20% interest rate. And just buckle up. Get ready. Uh, it was 17 years ago this month. And I thought it was actually a little earlier than that, but let's... This is from the Hill, and I believe that, you know, their research, I'm sure that it was, uh, that they were right. So you go back to 2001. Alan Greenspan, who was then the chairman of the Federal Reserve, and I want you to understand as we talk about uh, what was happening then, what's happening now, what's going to happen to all of us. And, 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 and again, I want you to know one thing. I don't want to scare anybody. It's not my point. What I'm going to tell you is factual. What I'm going to tell you is actually what's going to happen. And, and if anything, I'll, I'll minimize it because I, my mind just won't let me think it can be worse. And, and the realities are either you prepare or you don't. That's it. You know, we'll have days like, yes, the gold was down, right? Because there was a big, big break in the bond market and everything. Stopped. Everything was down. It happened. But over the long term, make no mistakes about it. The dollar is not rallying because of everything's great in America. The dollar is rallying over this bond market stuff that is crushing other countries. And that, too, will pass, and we'll be back on to the, the focus of where, unfortunately for us, we care about, which is our country. So either you prepare or you don't. Seventeen years ago this month, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan spoke before a group of bond market executives and delivered a striking pronouncement. Okay, so these are the guys that sit at the, you know, Monday, every day of the week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right, we, we sell these bonds, and we've been talking about these bond auctions a lot lately, haven't we, right? 
48 billion of, of three month notes, 42 billion of six month notes. Uh, all of them hitting uh, high yields that we haven't seen in over a decade and stuff like that. Foreign investors aren't buying and indirect bidders and direct bidders and, and all of that stuff. So he's talking to these executives. The first part was common knowledge. In, 20, in 2001, the economy was booming. Now, I don't know about booming. I mean, it was okay, right? But again, we we like to use booming a lot, right? Like right now, they like to say, hey, it's booming out there. Nah, it's okay. The government was looking forward to years of budget surpluses. The second part of what he said came out of left field. Greenspan projected that hefty tax coffers and thrifty spending. Okay, so think about what he just said. We got to have a lot of tax dollars, and we got to have thrifty spending. Now think about what we got today. We got a lot less tax dollars, and no, no one would even remotely accuse uh, Congress of being thrifty. But nonetheless, this is the 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 mood then, and that would soon allow the Treasury to pay off the entire national debt, an earth-shattering development that raised unprecedented public policy questions. How could the Federal Reserve implement monetary policy without Treasury securities, right? Because one of the things, right, they lower rates and, and issue the debt and do all that stuff, right? That was one of their tools of the toolkit. Should they consider purchasing precious paintings on the open market, right? This, not go, uh, we're going to buy a Picasso instead of issuing treasury debt. Economists buzzed with excitement about this unimaginable scenario. The Office of Management and Budget, okay, and the Congressional Budget Office We're actually studying these ideas, according to Greenspan. The remarks referred to the pay down of the federal debt. Now, I didn't know that that was important. Federal debt and national debt are not necessarily the same thing. I, I, I think they are, but, you know, it's semantics, right? It's like when I talked about earnings from these come how good are they we don't know right i know what they tell us earnings are after all the accounting tricks but what are the gap earnings we don't know same thing here with the federal debt and the national debt right but it's just an accounting trick what he was talking about was paying down treasury securities held by the public He was not including what they're calling in this article special treasury securities. Now, I've never heard of the special treasury securities before. But what they were referring to, because I had to look it up, they were referring to the IOUs in the filing cabinet in Virginia that is known as the Social Security Trust Fund. Well, the debt held by the public decreased $450 billion from 1997 to 2001. Okay? That was the official stint. When we talk about this number, think, when I tell you this is the small number, remember when we talk about that, I talk about the small number and the big number? Right, and they like to tell us the small number, like somehow we really don't owe the big number, which is, of course, we do. This was the small number. The national debt actually increased by $394 billion. So we actually didn't pay off anything. But the reason why is because during that, now think about 97 to 01, 
The government borrowed $844 billion from the trust fund. <laughs> and I only laugh now because they don't borrow anything anymore, right? There is, they, they, they've got to pay the pretend interest now. To bring this distinction to a personal level, and I like this, I like how they explained what the government has done and what it's going to mean for you, okay? Let's say your child asked you to hold on to money that they had earned doing odd jobs, okay? So maybe it's their allowance, maybe they're out mowing yards, uh, maybe grandma gave them a check for their birthday, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and they said, hey, mom and dad, hey, will you, will you hold this money for me? Instead of putting mon- the money into a savings account, you simply write an IOU to your child after you spent it using that money to pay off some kind of a debt, right? It doesn't matter how you spent it, right? Whether you spent it out, spent it going out to eat or you paid on the credit card, maybe you paid a car payment, who knows? It doesn't matter. So here your, your, your child gave you the money, you spent it. <laughs> and you just kept a little ledger. Okay, I, I owe Joey $100. I owe Joey $200. That's what the government did. That's what the trust fund is. It's full of IOUs. The, they, the word they used, special, I want to make sure I get it right, because, oh, yeah, special treasury securities, which means they're not a security at all. The government picked it, and they're just going to pretend that they actually bought the security. I guess that's what makes it special. So instead of putting all the money into the savings account, the Treasury issued $844 billion of IOUs. And you'll remember, a lot of people say there was a few years in the Clinton era, during this 97 to 01 era, where they ran those budget surpluses. And of course, Eric, I know Eric was out there saying, no, we didn't. Right, a budget, you, you would, the national debt should have went down. It didn't. And this is why. The government spent $394 billion of the borrowed money. The rest of the money considered a surplus, which was the 450, was used to pay off debt held by the public. So they still spent it, right? <laughs> right. Which, again, leads us to the problem that we're in right now. However, that didn't stop Greenspan. Well, everybody was focusing on surpluses. As far as the eye could see and the elimination of the debt, few people noticed that Greenspan's discussion of the true national debt. Again, right, confusing. Well, which one is it? Here's the bottom line. I don't care what they call it. Federal debt, national debt, special issue, Treasuries, whatever it does, we owe it all. And what he was talking about is that the accruing retirement benefits that had been promised but not funded. He stated that retirement programs were accumulating deficits and the liability for Social Security alone amounted to $10 trillion. Boy, don't you wish it was that now. Do you know what they're saying it is now? And they, this was a what? Right, what is the number now? $70 trillion? I, I, I can't remember. There's so many people. It just keeps going higher. But those were the good old days. Over the last 17 years, the federal government found it difficult to practice anything resembling fiscal restraint. And, of course, we couldn't have predicted all of these events. Like, right, we don't, you know, recessions and housing crisis, I guess, war and 9-11. You know, those are hard uh, to predict. But here's one of the things that that was really interesting to the prediction, right? We're going to have the debt paid off. 
We're going to save a bunch of money on interest. And now here we sit at a $21 trillion number. But the true national debt. So think back to what Greenspan was talking about in 2001. We're going to pay that public stuff off, which the public stuff now is like at, I don't know, the number 16 trillion, the small number. And he said, but it was the bigger number that was going to be a little trickier. And he said, you know, something around 10 trillion. Today, using the calculations that Greenspan used in 2001, the debt now is more than a hundred and four trillion when you take into consideration the unfunded liabilities. Why do I bring that up? I want you to understand, first of all, how Social Security was designed to work. So you go back to FDR, the Great Depression, and you know old people. Uh, they after they they can't work anymore. They need to have something put away, right? Because uh, re- relying on their their kids and their grandkids, like like they did for generations, wasn't good enough. Whatever happened to it? Why did we change it? and how it led us here. Patriot Radio News Hour. Don't touch that dial. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, presenting a daily conservative pro-family perspective since 1983 and continuing the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, from the Phyllis Schlafly Center Studios, Ed Martin. American citizenship is the most valuable status in the history of the world, worth even more than Roman citizenship was. It is absolutely necessary that a census of the American people in our country should include in its questions whether someone is a citizen of our country. Yet asking for that basic information created a massive firestorm amongst liberals who want to blur the distinction between those who are American citizens and those who are not. No one can claim it's an invasion of anyone's privacy to ask about citizenship, given that it should be a matter of public record. Wilbur Ross, the genteel industrialist who runs the obscure 115-year-old United States Department of Commerce, appears to be an unlikely person to cause such controversy. Ross holds a position that is considered a backwater in the president's cabinet, but it was Secretary Ross who's become the most valuable player of the Trump administration. Not only has he provided critical support for the president's America First trade agenda, but he's laid the groundwork for the president's re-election by restoring the citizenship question to the census. The importance of his decision is shown by the fact that Democrats in California immediately filed a lawsuit asking a federal judge to stop it. Federal judges appointed by Democrat presidents Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and even Jimmy Carter have become the first stop in the resistance to President Trump carrying out the will of the American people. The initial lawsuit against Wilbur Ross was filed by the Attorney General of California, Javier Becerra, who should have his hands full defending his state's unconstitutional sanctuary laws against a federal lawsuit by U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions. San Francisco is not only a sanctuary for illegal aliens, but is also a popular venue for liberals seeking judicial supremacy to block Trump at every turn. Another lawsuit against Ross is being threatened by Obama's disgraced Attorney General Eric Holder, who was found in criminal contempt of Congress for his role in covering up the Fast and Furious scandal. That should have been enough to derail Holder's legal career, but instead it's treated as a badge of honor by those who advocate for the alleged rights of illegal aliens. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report with Ed Martin, president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. American citizenship should never be taken lightly. That's why you need to go to phyllisschlafly.com and be part of the dialogue on the need for border security and an accurate census, the travesty of sanctuary cities, and voting rights for illegals. Voice your opinion at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Welcome back, Patriot Radio News Hour, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Gold is it's up twenty cents today, uh, twelve hundred ninety dollars fifty cents. Silver 
uh, having a little bit better of a day. Silver's up over seven cents right now, sixteen uh, twenty-seven on silver this morning. We're talking about the prediction Alan Greenspan made about paying off. Apparently, it wasn't the national debt, <laughs> federal debt, whatever that you want to use. The fact that in 01 they estimated the Social Security liabilities at around $10 trillion. 17 years later, it's over $100 trillion. And for most people, I think this is very, very important to understand how we're in this mess now and who's to blame and why I know, I know for a fact, you either prepare or you're, you're you're going to get wiped out. It's that simple. Social Security, when it was created, and you could argue that it shouldn't have been or what have you, but this has started us on this path that we're on today where seemingly everybody needs a check. And, and uh, you know, of course, it used to be you found a way, right? You find a way. Uh, that's been replaced with, oh, don't worry, we'll give you a check. So they started taking money out of people's paychecks, right? We call that the FICA tax, payroll tax, whatever you want to call it. 6.2% of all of your pay goes into it. For a lot of us, we're small business owners, 12.4%. Right? Think about that, right? Uh, I, I would tell you right now, I would let them keep my Social Security if they just stopped taking it out of my check. But that's not an option they give you. There's a reason they don't give you that option. But it used to be pay as you go. And what did that mean? That meant every year the government would be like, okay, we paid out, you know, $10 billion. So let's make sure the payroll tax collects about $10 billion. And every, you know, four or five years, they'd have to maybe bump it up a pinch. Now, this, now you've got to remember, this is the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And the payroll tax, it was, you know, 1%. And, and we were still on a quasi-gold standard. And then things started happening, right? We went off the gold standard in 71, and we wanted to, right, increase the money supply. The debt started piling up, right? Trade surpluses all disappeared. The debt was piling up, and, and we are in the, you know, the, the throes of the inflation of, of the 70s, and we had to come up with, with a way uh, to convince people that we could spend beyond our means. So what they decided was, hey, we wanted to, the government wanted to spend a lot more money, right? Because the, the central bank was saying, you know, you, you got to help out here. So they get, you know, the, a lot of people talk about the Reagan tax cut. The one thing they, they don't talk about was what they did to Social Security. It was a huge tax increase, but it wasn't bigger than the tax cut you got, so it still worked out as a benefit, and they tried to say, you know what, we've got these these baby boomers. You guys are going to retire, you know, 35 years from now, so we got to get ready, right? This was This is what they were saying, right? Now, think about this. We just passed a trillion dollars in 81. And I want to say the uh, the new site in Social Security, we stopped paying as you go. I want to say it was 83. And, of course, Alan Greenspan was the guy behind the Social Security stuff, who then became miraculously the, fe the head of the Federal Reserve in 1986. And so they decided that, hey, we won't do pays where we're going to collect way more than what we need. Unfortunately, they decided, hey, we can spend that money, and we'll worry about uh, those ramifications, you know, 35 years from now, 
right? Well, we'll worry about it then. And they spent it all. But they didn't actually have it show on the actual, what I'll call the small number, debt level. Right? They hid it. They hid it from us in the 80s, in the 90s, and and now today, believe it or not, at 6.2 or 12.4, we don't collect enough. We can't pay out. We pay out more than what's coming in right now. So in the old system, right, this, this Social Security stuff would have been going up all through the 80s and the 90s. And imagine this. Imagine if every couple of years they kept saying your payroll tax has to go higher, your payroll tax has to go higher, right, and debts are blowing up. A lot of people probably would have said, hey, maybe we got to rein this stuff in. But no one really paid attention because they didn't want you to know what was real. And they called it a trust. They Think of the words they put in it, trust fund. And then they called them non-marketable, but then they used the word security. Non-marketable security. Social Security Trust Fund, right? Security Trust. And, And really, we should have known. We should have never have trusted them because nothing actually exists in it. And so now they say, well, we're still not in deficit because of the interest the government has to pay on the almost $3 trillion that really doesn't exist. It's really fake interest. (laughs) They didn't buy anything with it, but they pretended that they did. And they do pretend to make the – it just raises the debt. So, So I want you to understand that in its simplest forms, we're already in a deficit. The problem is, over the next, well, really, it's about 14 years, but just, I'm going to just take the next 10, because that's enough. All of the $3 trillion that was there is going to be gone, right? And the government's paying for it the whole time, right? And the smaller number keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, they say they'll pay 75%. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's a lie, too. Well, it's an optimistic assumption. How about that? And so when you think about the new number using Greenspan's math, they're now saying it's a $100 trillion problem. Problem is, about, what, at least a third of that number is due in the next 10 years. See the, see the problem? Patriot Radio News Hour. My son graduates from high school. What about the kids graduating from college? What do they have to look forward to? 800-951-0592. So we find out, okay, so social security, we know this, right? It, it's blowing up as we, but even today, they can't be honest. Oh, no, well, it's the, we, we won't be in deficit until 2021 or 2022. No, we are now, but, but. Semantics again, right? Gap accounting and non-gap accounting. Same thing. It's all in how you want to perceive the book work. But when you just simply use common sense math, we take in less than what we're putting out. That means deficit. And if there is no, (laughs) if you never bought a security at a trust fund, that means there isn't one. Same thing, and really, we're finding this applying to most of the economics that they preach to us every day. We talk about unemployment a lot. This article uh, just came out, and they just finished with uh, with this study about kids graduating from college. I was sitting there thinking about, you know, my oldest son graduating from high school, getting ready uh to go to college, and, and Jeff Spross is the guy. Uh, he 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 wrote the article based on the research from the Policy Institute, talking about as hundreds of thousands, and I wonder if it's even millions of young Americans on the cusp of graduating from college. 
for Americans aged 21 to 24 who have a bachelor's degree, okay? So they've done it, right? And, and you think about and I think about it this way, right? This is what they told us we had to do for our kids. Just like they told all of you got to you got to save for retirement. You got to do your 401k and you got to build it up. You got to put the max in there and then when you get to 55, you get out of stocks, you go into bonds and you live off the interest and da-da. and of course that really, none of that's true. Right? No more uh buy and hold and invest for the long term, right? They don't do that anymore. Well, they told all of us our kids had to go to college. If you wanted to have any chance at succeeding in what was the slowly evaporating American dream, your kid had to get that bachelor's degree. For those that have that degree, that aren't enrolled in further schooling, okay, so they're trying their best to make the number look as good as possible, okay, the unemployment rate is back to where it was in 2008, which is 5.3%, okay, which is already a whole lot higher than the number they're telling us right now. And these are the kids graduating with degrees. Pay no mind that if you went back to the 90s, that number was at 4.3%, by the way. So we're, we're actually, we're, we're worse off. And, and, and the problem with this 5.3 number, that gets us back to 08, but does it? When they looked underneath the number, here's what they found about the 5.3% unemployment rate for college graduates. The amount of what they're calling underemployed graduates is at an all-time record high. Think about that. Right? So here I'm tomorrow I'm going to be a proud dad. My kids graduating from high school. That used to be enough. You know, when when I was growing up, that was all you needed. You didn't even really need that, right? You know, if you could read and write, you you could make it work. But if you had that that high school diploma, you were good. You could be in the middle class of America. Maybe you weren't going to run IBM, but you could do okay for yourself. Now you get the bachelor's degree, not so great. People who have looked for work in the past year as well as the past month okay, are included in this number. Only the latter, however, are counted in the official unemployment rate. So these kids graduated from college, a year goes by, they don't have a job. The hiring rate for Americans who haven't looked for a job in the last month is is the highest it's been in decades. And the underemployment rate for recent college grads remains significantly higher. Unemployment for white recent college grads is back, you know, to where it was in 2000. Uh, for all the, uh, you know, the, the for African Americans, it's a, a couple of percent higher. Uh, and then the unemployment rate for women is about where it's at but it's one and a half percent higher for men, right? We've been talking about how it's, you know, the the white man's the endangered species, and really any man. But what is key to this is the underemployment, which remains significantly elevated by any metric. So here it is. They paid to go to college. You paid to go to college. They borrowed to go to college, and the jobs aren't there. A lot of recent college graduates have taken jobs that don't actually require a college degree. We keep talking about it. 
among college grads 22 to 27. 38% of them did not have a job that required a higher level of education in 2000. You know what that number is today? Almost half of all college graduates now hold jobs that don't require a college degree. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. Rates continue to rise, bankruptcy filings continuing to rise. Applebee's second largest franchisee, RMH Holdings, filed for bankruptcy protection this morning. Uh, 163 locations. They estimate they have creditors between five and 10,000 different creditors. Wow. Uh, they filed for bankruptcy protection. Rockport Shoe Company uh, also filed for uh, bankruptcy uh, protection as well. Uh, the, it, it filed Chapter 11. I want. I think it was. Uh, yeah. So they they include brands of Rockport and Dunham. Follow Payless and Nine West into bankruptcy. Uh, it's trying to stay in business. Uh, it's got 20. Warren may be forced to close all of its standalone retail stores, which they got 27 of those, and then they got some others where they they are in business with other people. They also have uh, 33 stores in Canada. They've also filed for bankruptcy. And just hold on. I mean, this is what we're going to see now. A lot of these companies uh, that that uh, that I've been referring to as the zombies. That the only reason why they were able to hold on. Uh, was because rates were at zero, uh, now starting to all file for bankruptcy protection, uh, and we'll just have to wait and see uh, how many it's going to be. It's already been a big year. You know, last year was a big year. This year, uh, another big year uh, before all of that catches up to to us. Uh, Right now, there's not a lot of product out there. We've been talking about this uh, for a number of days, uh, U.S. 20s, you know, today back up to 1380. Uh, gold's now up a dollar, but gold's right just hanging out here, 1291. Uh, silver, uh, U.S. Silver Eagles, 2018s at 395. Uh, the better way to go is those half dollars, silver half dollars, uh, at a hundred and thirty-five dollars a roll, or I'm sorry, a hundred and thirty dollars a roll. At 800 951 It looks like the North Korea, uh, I don't know, uh, peace summit, whatever you'd like to call it, uh, may be coming to an end. North Korea said, hey, wait a minute, we're not going to get rid of our nukes. Uh, and if that's the deal, then we don't want to come. We'll have to wait to see. Also, this number out, housing start. Caught everybody off guard. Uh tumbled again in April, and so did permits. Uh, well, again, though, home builders aren't really building that many homes. Everything's an apartment complex. Uh, housing starts drop, drop 3.7%. Uh, the economists had expected a, a slight increase. Uh, starts fell in the Northeast, the West, and the Midwest. Uh, the only market that was up. Uh, was the south, uh, and that brings us down to a number. We're, we're heading back down towards uh, December's number. You know, December they don't do a lot because of winter in a lot of places. Single family home building, 894,000 units. Single family home building has lost momentum since November. Uh, and, and so now we're, we're sitting there and we're looking at you know, rates rising again. I think today kind of signifies that. I don't know that we're going to go back below 3%. Maybe. Uh, but at least right now, that 10-year note, sure looking like it wants to head higher. Uh, we'll have to see what that does to home builders. 800-951-0592. Radio News Hour. We'll talk again tomorrow.